Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, every once in a while, we, we do a copy of one of the uh, masters, master paintings from the past. And this is a painting by John Carlson. I assume it's Vermont, where he painted very often. And it's a beautiful snow painting. So uh, we're going to do it today. That's an oil painting, obviously. And we're going to do it today in watercolor. It's very beautiful, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay? So take your time and uh, do a nice sketch, very simple, especially the horizon and then that water. Okay? All right, we'll start in the sky. This is Windsor Blue. Do a nice wash and just bring it down to the horizon line. Straight Windsor Blue. Windsor and Thalo are the same, you know. So you want to keep a nice, simple sky because it's very busy down uh, in the snow area. So much going on down there. Just bring it down to the horizon line. And I'm going to use the same color for the first, first uh, blush on the water itself. Whenever you're doing water, you always want to do it in several layers. So this is the first layer on that uh, river. And it's, it's uh, winter blue, phthalo blue again, same as the sky because it's reflecting the sky. So we're going to leave, as we put additional layers on that, we'll leave specks of this uh, Windsor blue coming through and that will tie that together and show the reflection of the sky in there, which is really nice. Okay, all right. So uh, we put it in the water, but we're also just randomly uh, putting some reflections onto the snow here and there. It could be in the shadow just reflecting the sky. Snow is never, almost never the white of the paper, you know. So we'll leave it, um, we'll leave the highlights, but we'll get some color in there as well. And what I'm doing is basically taking that Windsor Blue, I'm adding a drop of rose to it, and lots of water. Very weak, but a nice, you know, is a nice, a nice little color on the snow, and leaving some white highlights where, you know, where where it's uh, turning or whatever. All right, we're putting in. Uh, these are the rocks on the edge of the water. Very beautiful, uh, quarry sort of granite rocks. This is again the first blush. It's a raw sienna. Little touch of Quincy in her in there, cobalt blue. Touch of cobalt blue, cool it down. You can see the rocks above, they're very beautiful. And then just tapping in some color here and there, just get some random color in there, you know, some modulation in the color showing the different turns of the rock and different facets. I love rocks and I love painting rocks. The, the color is so magnificent, you know. All right, a little dark color. Underneath the snow, it's, it's, uh, it's very dark. So again, that, those rocks are still wet, so I'm just adding some uh, dark colors in there. So I'm dropping in some, you know, random colors on those rocks. And as, as they say, you want to get a nice modulation of color. Just touching it up here and there. You know, look at the photo, get some inspiration from the photo. And you can see my color is much brighter than that. So I'm dropping in a little cobalt blue here and there to dull it down. And then randomly putting some, some spots up in the snow that show, you know, peaks, pieces of rock coming through or, or grass, you know. All right, I'm putting another layer here on the, on the water. Now what I did here was I took the Windsor Blue and added a drop of cadmium red to it. I know it doesn't sound right, but there's so much red in nature. It's amazing. So I added some red to that and you can see how dark it is now and just covering the same, you know, the water, the, the, the river but leaving some, some spots of the winds of blue coming through. And we'll put another layer on that later. So you need to put several layers if you want to get that 
a realism in the water. All right, I'm taking a dark color here. This is ultramarine with just a touch of quinsienna, quinacridone sienna mixed in to get a nice dark color and leaning it towards the quinsienna here and there and just outlining the rocks with it. The deep shadow is that shows under the snow and along the edge of the water. Get some cracks and crevices in here. So you get a nice, beautiful look of rocks. And we'll go back and soften this later, but I want to get it, get that dark area in all the way around here and there. Take your time with it. You can see already, already how this is forming. It's, it's beautiful painting snow, and it's a different, different world. Okay. So a little dark edge along the water where it's not, this shadow is not showing. Okay, up above all these spots where the rocks are showing. All right, so I'm gonna take some of that dark, a lot of water here and loosen it up, loosen that, those edges up. You get a nice dark shadow around the rock and create some form some form to the rock and some beautiful color. Such a beautiful scene, isn't it? Really nice. All right. So in the background, we have a whole row of distant hills, some distant land on the back there. And there's some, you know, and a little cobalt blue and Queen Ross Sienna there. Maybe a drop of red to cool it down, but keep it towards the cool side. So it's just a bunch of trees and a bunch of a hillside way off in the distance with, with the modulation of color again. You can see I put a, a row of dark along the bottom. And all right, here I'm putting in the tree. You can see it's Ross Sienna with some cobalt blue tiny touch of quinciana cobalt blue getting that gray in there and really just getting the outline of the trees and the shape of the trees get that in now i'm very dark on the bottom so this is it's just uh it's cobalt blue and a little bit of quinciana and make sure the trees are coming down in front of the snow so they're not sitting on the horizon they're before the horizon so you want to bring that whole shape in front of the snow all right i'm taking a credit card here and while that trees are all still wet and just squeegeeing out some uh, branches don't dig in too hard here now you don't want to you don't want to damage your paper, just squeegee go across the paper, moving the, it's all wet, so it's easy to move that paint around and get it really working for you. All right, just, you can see how good that looks. Get some birch trees in there, and you can use that credit card to get some branches and the edge of it. All right, I'm adding a little uh, quinciana here, and just a tiny drop of rose. I want to warm up the trees and just bring that whole shape forward on, on the painting, you know. Okay. <clears throat> All right, we have another uh, solo tree over here, just very simple. Same colors, nice trunk, a few branches, a little bit of a shadow underneath that tree. And I'm putting a little shadow here and there on the snow again as it, as it turns. Some random shadow out back there. You gotta have the shadow, you know, the white doesn't, doesn't jump out. You know, if you, if you leave it all white, it doesn't work. You know, so you gotta have some, you gotta put some shadow on that snow. All right, now I'm putting another third layer, third layer on the, on the water. And you can see now I'm gonna leave 
both both of those uh, Windsor Blue and the second layer have different beacon through there, so you got you got a really nice. Um, yeah, there's a nice sense of movement in the water, and that's what that creates, those layers. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you again very soon.